Welcome. This is what's been happening on the Sun on Saturday the 8th of April 2011. The Sun seems to be going through this pattern recently, of having a day of activity and then taking a couple of days off. And this last 24 hours has been no exception. All we've had is a few mid-class B flares. The reason for this lies in the nature of the sunspot regions that we have on the Sun at the moment. There is no shortage of sunspots. However, all the regions are relatively simple and stable. 1184 is just rotating off the west limb. 1185 and 1186 are relatively stable. As I said yesterday, the region just to the south and east of 1185 has been numbered as a separate region, now 1189. And it's the interaction between 1185, 1186 and 1189 that I think has produced what little activity we have seen. As I forecast yesterday, the region just south of Sun Center has become a numbered region, 1188, just in time, of course, to lose its spots. Region 1187 is coming more onto the disk, but is not particularly impressive. We may have a hint of another region coming over the east limb, but it is not as yet numbered. Now let's go to Stereo A and see what happened to the regions that recently rotated off the disk. The only real activity is coming from the old region 1176, and at the end of this sequence you'll see a huge loop joining it to a region in the north. That loop must be hundreds of thousands of kilometers long. Next we turn to SDO, which gives us information on the hemisphere of the Sun that's pointing towards the Earth. If we look at the sunspot movies, and in particular if we look at the magnetic movie, we can see that there's no particular emergence of new magnetic flux anywhere, and the spots that exist are not moving around with respect to one another, both of which are the usual harbingers of activity. In the Helium 2 movie, we see that the prominence in the southeast may have finally rotated completely onto the disk. However, that leaves it stretching almost from limb to limb, and the front edge in the next few days may well be visible on the west limb. This is quite an impressive feature, but what causes the formation of a prominence? On this Helium 304 image, I've outlined the extent of the prominence. So now we'll transfer that outline to the magnetic field. Do you notice something about the magnetic field either side of that line? Above it, all the magnetic field is showing as black, which means that it's going away from us. Below it, most of the field is white, which means it's coming towards us. Prominence seem to form a boundary between positive and negative field. This is a so-called neutral line. In the southern hemisphere at the moment, we have a very long and uncomplicated neutral line. However, if the whole thing becomes unstable and lifts off, we could have a coronal mass ejection that literally stretches halfway around the sun, which would be very exciting. I've only seen it a couple of times before, but it does happen. The thing to keep an eye on in the Corolla movie are the interactions between 1185, 1186 and 1189. Next we turn to the coronal movies from Stereo B. We see there's not very much going on here at the moment. That's because the regions are few and far between, and what regions there are are small and weak. The hemisphere is mainly dominated by quiet sun and the large coronal hole that I mentioned yesterday. From the SOHO coronagraph, we see that we've continued to have a series of coronal mass ejections over the last couple of days, but none of them are particularly large, and how many of them are going to affect the Earth is an open question. From the whole Sun coronal image, we see that there are no major regions due back for at least another week. The auroral arc looks very active and probably means that we were brushed by at least one of those coronal mass ejections that we've seen in the last few days. However, the KP index is still rated as quiet. So in summary then, the sunspot number has increased to 97, as I predicted it would. However, ironically, the X-ray background has dropped to the B3 level. This shows that, in my opinion, that sunspot number is not a very good indicator of solar activity. The radio sun's intensity has dropped below 110 solar flux units. Solar wind speeds about 450 kilometers per second, and the KP index is very between 0 and 3. So I'm going to keep my forecast very similar to yesterday, with a good chance of C flares, but a decreasing chance of M and X flares. I think there's a good chance of getting CMEs, and a very low chance of getting a geomagnetic storm in the next couple of days. So that's it for today. Don't forget the links to the previous versions of The Sun Today are listed in the description box below, as are links to my other videos. So keep safe. Bye for now.